<clears throat> good morning uh, to all of you i'm uh, dr shashikala here talking to you or teaching you today about uh, wbc disorders continuing with wbc disorders i should say hope all of you are safe take care of yourselves and uh, your family uh wbc disorders uh, dr rajshekar has already told you about uh, the different non neoplastic disorders including leukemia leukemia is neoplastic that the non neoplastic wbc disorders so in today's class i'm dealing with wbc disorders which form a separate group known as lymphomas so if you look at this terminology lymphoma what sort of a disease is this we have taught you oma means a tumor no whenever there is a suffix oma we say it's a tumor and the general dictum we have taught you is any terminology that ends with oma is neoplastic right what is the classification of neoplasia benign tumors malignant tumors we said we said most of the terminologies were ending with oma are all benign tumors example lipoma what is lipoma benign tumor arising from adipose tissue right osteoma benign tumor arising from bone leiomyoma benign tumor arising from smooth muscle but remember every rule has an exception not all the tumor names ending with suffix oma are benign so here is a malignant tumor so lymphoma though it is ending with the suffix oma it's a highly malignant tumor so what are the tissues affected or which tissue is mainly affected so it is a lymphocyte so so let us just consider it as a lymph node so lymphoma so this is what we are going to learn today because uh, this could be one of the short note topics for you in the exams so lymphoid neoplasms we are talking about lymphoid neoplasms and lymphoma so what does lymphoma include it includes two particular types so one is called as the hodgkins lymphoma so when one type is hodgkins lymphoma there's something another type which is called as non hodgkins lymphoma familiar with these two terminologies now hodgkins lymphoma non hodgkins lymphoma so the third one is lymphocytic leukemia this you've learned from dr rajshekar lymphocytic leukemia and the fourth one is plasma cell neoplasms and related disorders do you know about plasma cells you know about lymphocytes the type of lymphocytes i'll tell you later at least b cell t cell you've heard or learned in first year so what is the function of b cells b lymphocytes they produce immunoglobulin they involved in humoral immunity so b cells are the cells which get transformed to plasma cells and these cells produce antibodies what are antibodies they are immunoglobulins so in many instances tumors are composed of cells that resemble some normal stage of lymphocytic differentiation so i won't deal with lymphocytic differentiation in detail because this is all this is your first year uh, topic histology and uh, embryology so b cells means why are they called as b so they bone marrow derived t cells thymus derived cells okay so in all these diseases and how do they develop so there's something called as a lymphoblast that is the immature cell you can say precursor cell so it's a lymphoblast that develops into a 
mature cell so when lymphoblast becomes a mature cell we call it as a lymphocyte okay so in many instances tumors are composed of cells that resemble some normal stage of lymphocytic differentiation so based on what type of cells are there what are the markers that these cells contain they're all classified see so what are the two lymphomas that affect the lymph nodes hodgkins lymphoma non hodgkins lymphoma so please register these two terminologies hodgkins lymphoma non hodgkins lymphoma so hodgkins lymphoma why it is called as hodgkins it's a special type it is you know set apart by the presence of it, it has something special in it what is that special it's a malignant tumor yes scary but it has got some specialized cells which are known as reed sternberg giant cells you have been taught about giant cells what are giant cells giant even if we ask a, a school child what is giant you know the child thinks oh it's huge right yes it is larger in what way it is larger what does it contain more normally cell has a single nucleus so giant cell has many nuclei giant cell has multiple nuclei so we call it as giant cell and of course the size also would be prominent or large so that it stands out size is large so it stands out prominently so peculiarity of hodgkins lymphoma is the presence of reed sternberg not just cells giant cells reed sternberg cells so why are they called as uh, reed sternberg it was jaroti reed and sternberg so the scientists who discovered the presence of this cell so if we have to abbreviate this cell reed sternberg cell what do we call this as just give a try rs cell rs cell so rs cells means reed sternberg cells so where are they present they present in lymphoma which type of lymphoma hodgkins lymphoma so in what way hodgkins lymphoma is peculiar it is peculiar in a way that it contains special type of cell known as rs cell or reed sternberg giant cell which is not seen in non hodgkins lymphoma okay hope these two points are clear and you have registered in your mind lymphomas two main categories hodgkins lymphoma non hodgkins lymphoma so why hodgkins lymphoma because it has got peculiar type of cell what is this peculiar type of cell it's a giant cell and what is it labeled or just referred to as rs cells so reed and sternberg people who have discovered this cell so these are the malignant cells in hodgkins lymphoma i am just simplifying this because this topic you may find it difficult no but even that difficult uh, uh, topic i just want to make it very simple so that you have a carry home message you carry the important points related to this and what else so the biological behavior and clinical treatment of hodgkins lymphoma is also different so hodgkins lymphoma is not just different by its presence containing rs cells within it but the behavior how it behaves and also the treatment aspect so it differs from nhl what is nhl non hodgkins lymphoma so both are distinct entities this is what i have uh, taken from your standard uh, book what you read uh, hirschmann's textbook of uh, pathology or general pathology or textbook for uh, dental students so the who classification of lymphoid malignancies classified 
the lymphoid malignancies as Hodgkin's disease, B cell malignancies, and T cell malignancies. I just don't want to complicate going into these details, but just remember the first one Hodgkin's disease. Is it a peculiarity present of RSL and prognosis and treatment and behavior also is different from non Hodgkin's? Then B cell and T cell. That means the malignant is lymphomas, which are derived from B cell, B lymphocytes, and lymphomas, which are derived from T lymphocytes. So, how do we know that these lymphomas are derived from these cells? So, that is by immunohistochemistry, by typing the cells. Then. So, another classification. WHO classification, NHL classification is quite complicated. I don't think uh, you would be asked to classify uh, NHL. See, precursor B cell neoplasm, precursor T cell neoplasm. So previously we saw only B cell neoplasm, T cell neoplasm. So we know that B cell could be lymphoblast. It could be in different stages of maturity, right? Lymphoblast too lymphocyte so lymphoblast pro lymphocyte lymphocyte and all that so here they take precursor b cell neoplasm precursor t cell neoplasm and then peripheral t bar nk cell neoplasm so what is this nk cell this is another type of lymphocyte we call them as natural killer cells so tumors that arise from these cells and then comes hodgkin's lymphoma so all these are non-Hodgkin's, then Hodgkin's lymphoma. So under Hodgkin, uh, sorry, under non-Hodgkin's uh, lymphomas, tumors, lymphomas arising from B cell and T cell. Again under B cell, tumors that arise from precursor B cell. And then tumors that arise from precursor T cell. Then peripheral T bar NK cell neoplasm. If you want, you can just pause at this level and go through the classification just to understand it. This already we are familiar with, learnt about this in first year. So B cell neoplasms, T cell neoplasms. What is this classification applied for? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. B cell, T cell. B cell, where is it derived from? the bone marrow okay so precursor b cell you've heard this terminology then small lymphocytes chronic lymphatic leukemia multiple myeloma so four tumors if possible please remember so lymphoma arising from precursor b cell it, it's like uh, some tumor arising from uh, the grandfather or grandmother okay so then, small lymphocytic lymphoma, this is from the grandchild, you can say. Then, multiple myeloma, that is from the plasma cell. Multiple myeloma arising from plasma cell. Then, T cells. Previous slide, do you remember? We said lymphoma arising from T, precursor T cells. So, precursor T cells. and Peripheral T cell, very easy to remember here. Precursor T cell that is arising from grandmother or grandfather. Then comes peripheral T cells. So children were all left in the blood. So lymphoma arising from T cells that are there, T lymphocytes that are, that are there in the blood. Yeah. Now I'll take up uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. So one of the lymphomas uh, uh, you need to know about. So why should you know about lymphomas? Is it only for the purpose of writing uh, an answer in the theory exam? No. So when you are practicing, when you are sitting in your clinic, patients may come with lymphadenopathy. They may come to you with swelling in the neck. Okay, this swelling... I'll tell you one special type of lymphoma. It could affect the jaw also. So you should know that this is 
also a disease that has to be kept in mind as a differential diagnosis so all of you have learned to palpate the lymph node examine the lymph nodes right so lymphadenopathy not just one so when there are many so there are so many causes starting from the commonest cause still in a tropical country like ours tuberculosis most common is just a reactive lympho lymphadenopathy any lesion here even the, the scalp infection so the draining lymph nodes or two take the draining lymph node it enlarges could be painful so starting from reactive or inflammatory lymphadenitis to a specific infection that is tuberculosis to a malignant disease so ma what malignancies involve the lymph node it could be primary it could be secondary what is this primary lymphatic malignancy that is lymphoma what is secondary malignancy in the lymph node so any tumor in the oral cavity jaw or in the draining area so when it metastasizes to the lymph node so when it spreads to the lymph node that becomes secondary so tumors of lymph node lymph node could be primary or secondary so primary is lymphoma secondary is metastatic tumor hope it's clear i'm trying to simplify this further so we are talking about hodgkins disease so recollect what is the important thing i told you hodgkins it's kept as a separate group because it contains special type of cells so what are the special type of cells that are present think think the temporal lobe it has the short term memory so only when you sleep not in the class afterwards so all this memory that is there gets processed synthesized and goes to the hippocampus so it's just a memory that you have got in input now so rs cells rs cells stand for reed stone book cells okay so this primarily arises within the lymph node though this is a primary tumor of the lymph node secondarily it can involve the lympho lymphoid organs like the reticular endothelial system what is there on the side spleen liver etc so this comprises about 8% of all the cases of lymphoid neoplasms so 8% of all cases of lymphoid neoplasms are constituted by hodgkins lymphoma so hodgkins disease is more prevalent in young adult males and females see this had to be underlined young adult males than females you know this is there something here so actually females are more affected we say with hodgkins with the experience what uh, you know we have seen the cases so the incidence of the disease has bimodal peak so what does it mean whenever we think of malignancy we always say oh malignancy affects elderly people no there are malignancies or cancers or tumors that affect children also childhood malignancies for example leukemias affecting children especially the acute leukemias that affect children right so hodgkins lymphoma has got a bimodal age incidence that is it affects younger age group as well as elderly people so register this terminology now bimodal peak incidence hodgkins lymphoma occurs or affects young individuals as well as elderly that means there's a group of people here youngsters who can get this the seas and it's not just restricted to young age so even the elderly can be affected so that is a bimodal age incidence 
so the other peak is active fifth decade that is what you know i told you elderly so diagnosis how do we diagnose this um, lymph node we are talking about lymph node malignancy how can it be diagnosed just think of a simple scenario you are sitting in your clinic so patient comes with lymphadenopathy so you suspect all the causes starting from inflammatory to specific inflammation tuberculosis to primary that is hodgkins lymphoma or non hodgkins and then metastatic so what has to be done what do you do simple investigations right some tests that need to be done to confirm what you have made clinical di clinically the diagnosis so what is it the procedure called as we put a syringe with a needle into the swelling we aspirate cells and the aspirated cell that is in the needle is put on a aspirated cells or fluid or material is put on a slide a smear is made it is stained with papanicolaou stain and observed microscopically what is this procedure it's called as fnac what is fnac stand for so this means fine needle aspiration cytology fine needle aspiration cytology so diagnosis is by fine needle aspiration cytology is it just enough no whatever is the lymph node or the swelling there that has to be biopsied after biopsy what is it that is done microscopic examination we make slides and study the morphology that's called as histopathological examination so how do we confirm it is by biopsy microscopic diagnosis we see microscopically how whether the cells are there and how were they what type and all that so biopsy usually from the lymph node occasionally from other tissues so unlike nhl what is nhl non hodgkins lymphoma there is only one universally accepted classification of hodgkins disease so remember nhl i showed you classification b cell t cell precursor b cell precursor t cell then all the other cells peripheral t cell so here the small cell or the, the chronic lymphatic leukemia plasma cell uh, or multiple myeloma etc so hodgkins disease is classified into four types this is right classification so first type is lymphocytic predominant type that means the lymph node has lot of lymphocytes it's not lost it is present then second is nodular sclerosis type lymph node becomes nodules nodular third is mixed cellularity that means lymph node has mixed type of cells and fourth is lymphocyte depletion that means lymphocytes are destroyed there less number of lymphocytes so this is one classification of hodgkins lymphoma so the who classification of lymphoid neoplasms this divides hodgkins disease into two main groups so one is nodular i told you in the previous slide so nodular lymphocytic predominant type of hodgkins disease and the classical hodgkins so what four types we saw lymphocytic predominant nodular sclerosis lymphocytic depletion lymph mixed cellularity so all these are put as classical hodgkins disease and another one is nodular lymphocytic predominant so this is the new classification offered by who then what causes this we've talked about uh, viral oncogenesis no neoplasia classes there's a virus that is implicated in the etiology or etiopathogenesis of hodgkins disease so what is this virus have you heard of ebv very important you people should know about it epstein barr virus normally what does it cause it causes infectious mononucleosis in whom in people like you adolescents it's called as kissing disease 
see the virus spreads by kissing through saliva and young adults present with typical fever generalized lymphadenopathy and when we examine the blood peripheral smear shows lot of lymphocytosis lymph lymphocytes so this absolute lymphocytosis is present of atypical lymphocytes which are called as donny mckinley cells okay so ebv epstein barr virus is implicated in the etiology of hodgkin lymphoma so what does epstein barr virus also cause it causes infectious mononucleosis a kissing disease so it's there as one of the etiological factors for nasopharyngeal carcinoma it's implicated in the pro in uh, causing the kaposi sarcoma also okay so ebv so this transforms so germinal center has b cells so ebv infected it gets incorporated into the genome of the host cell and transforms that into malignant cell so what malignant cell that does it become rs cell and rs cell further liberates certain cytokines and all the back in the background we see all types of types of cells in the lymph node and these are the tumor cells so rs cells are the tumor cells in hodgkin's lymphoma and the background is just reactive that is inflammatory response so the diagnosis of hodgkin's disease rests on identification of rs cells only if rs cells are present in the lymph node we make a diagnosis of hodgkin's lymphoma or hodgkin's disease yes so additional cellular and architectural features of the biopsy must be given due consideration so you look at the other changes also is what is important and how are these rs cells so the classic rs cells are of different types but i am describing the classic rs cell just remember how is it it resembles outline so one point you should remember is you should say the classical uh, rs cell looks like owl eye or has an owl eye appearance or we compare the classical rsl to owl eyes appearance that means it's a large cell so it's, it's standing out so prominently background the cells are all lymphocytes so it's a large cell even here you can make out even here you can make out so what is the cell contain abundant cytoplasm so much of cytoplasm it is pink in color then how is the nucleus see the nucleus is uh, like this is a two nuclei right look at only the center what uh, i am i am holding and if they say if the nucleus is like this it is bilobed so if they are discrete two separate we say two nuclei but here they are together so we call it as bilobed classically a bilobed nucleus and what is the nucleus contain inside see the eosinophilic round very prominent structures so these are the nucleoli eosinophilic nucleoli and what is there around the nucleoli a clear space so this is the classical appearance of classical rs cell so draw a diagram of this write a large cell then write two nuclei which are together so bilobed then pink cytoplasm and inside that use pink color to draw the nucleoli so this is a classical rs cell which is supposed to be looking like or similar to owl eye appearance then there's another type of so rs cell is a short note for you should mention mention the types and draw at least the diagram of classical cell so lacunar type this is present in nodular sclerosis and uh, here it could look like rs cell but important to see around the cell there is a clear space so around the cell there is a clear space that means the cytoplasm shrinks so it is sitting what is lacuna lacuna is a space so this cell is sitting in a space so we call it as lacunar cell and uh, what has happened to the lymph node here lymph node is traversed by fibrous septae so the fibrosis has divided lymph node into septae so that is nodules so this is nodular sclerosis so third type what is this the popcorn 
which all of you are allowed to eat. So third type is polyploid or popcorn type of Hodgkin's or RS cell, which is present in lymphocytic, histiocytic, uh, L and H type RS cell. We say. So here the nuclei are lobated. So in classic RS cell, we say bilobed. So here multiple lobes are there and prominent eosinophilic uh, uh, nucleolus. So it looks like or has the shape of the popcorn. So third type. Then fourth is pleomorphic RS cell. So these are all pleomorphic atypical. They have their own shape and appearance. Not just like what three types we discussed or described how they look. So they're all vague. They're all in their own shape. They're all atypical and they're plenty. So when RS cells are plenty, what does it tell us? Good or bad? RS cells are the malignant cells. More RS cells, that means it is, it, this tumor has a bad prognosis. If less RS cells are there, that means we say tumor cells are less and prognosis is good. So this is for you to have a look at different types of RS cells. So RS cell is a frequently asked short answer question for you, remember. So classic RS cell, owl eye appearance. So mononuclear, if only single nucleus is there, we call it as Hodgkin cell also. Then lacunar cell, so this is a cell and outside the cell we see clear space. Then popcorn, this has got lobated nucleus. Then atypical or anaplastic, which we said in lymphocytic depletion time. And mummified variant. So mummies, what, what are these mummies? So dead bodies, right? So the dead cell there. The nature and origin of RS cells, uh, they are real neoplastic cells, so you should remember that. And one re main reason for this difficulty in their characterization is unlike most other malignancies, so number of neoplastic cells is very, when, when we see tumor, so uh, all the tumors, the tumor cells are so many, but here RS cells being the tumor cells, the number varies, sometimes they are just 5% or less than 5%. So immunophenotyping. So just remember the marker for RS cells. They're positive for CD15, CD30. Remember only the, these two here, CD15, CD30. So CD15, CD30, positive. So markers for RS cells. Then how do patients with this disease Present. So we have learned about the diagnosis. How do these patients present? We have told you about the age group. So young or too old, bimodal. So they present with lymphadenopathy and uh, both Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's, they may present in a similar way. So they may just come with the group of lymph nodes enlarged. They may come with just single group. So when you palpate and see, that you can make out the lymph nodes are enlarged. Normally, the lymph nodes are not palpable. They're just few millimeters in size. So once you palpate, they become palpable means they're pathologic. So here they're all enlarged. They're discrete. What is it? So now how with corona, we all sit separately, social distancing. So like that, they're all discrete. They're not together. And... When we feel, we look at the consistency also, they all have a rubbery consistency. So this is classical appearance of NHL or uh, even Hodgkin's lymphoma. Whereas tuberculosis, they're all crowded. So like many people, you know, we keep telling them, please maintain social distancing. No, they're all together, like matted group of lymph nodes. That is classical of tuberculosis. And uh, what else? So... There could be extra nodal. If it has spread, then other groups may be involved and there could be hepatosplenomegaly also. And uh, fever is another uh, feature that we should remember along with this. And when we just, this biopsy, I told you for diagnosis, the lymph node has to be taken off. The biopsy lymph node, if we just cut and see, what does a biopsy lymph node from tuberculosis show? Caseation, right? So here we do not see caseation, 
we we see a homogeneous appearance which is likened to or compared to fish flesh appearance cut section is homogeneous so fish flesh appearance and uh, this is uh, of course liver which is involved with secondary so that is about the gross appearance the lymph nodes are discrete they are not matted cut section has a homogeneous pink appearance likened to that of fish flesh appearance so classical hodgkins disease as per who classification so if it has got lot of lymph nodes lymphocytic predominant type so then we say it has got good prognosis this could be nodular also even the nodular sclerosis type has got a good prognosis so two types lymphocytic predominant type nodular form so nodules remember what i showed you previous so it is characterized by fibrosis fibrous septum is dividing the lymph node into nodules uh for making diagnosis definite demonstration of rs rsl must then should be there to make a diagnosis of hodgkins lymphoma and i have told you the types of rs cells what are the types classical rs cells then lacuna type of rs cells popcorn type atypical mummified yes so nodular sclerosis this picture i showed you lymph node will be divided into nodules and typically we see lacuna type of rsl this usually affects young individuals female cervical lymph node and said to have a better prognosis so bands of collagen these are the bands of collagen mixed cellularity what is this mixed cellularity that means these are only the tumor cells see these are the tumor cells but what is there in the background so background has eosinophils can you make out these red cells see so nicely seen here so eosinophils are there then plasma cells are there see these are plasma cells and small lymphocytes are there so this is the mixed cellularity so here also there could be this type has typical rs cells so these include proliferating lymphocytes histiocytes eosinophils sometimes neutrophils also could be there so that is mixed cellularity type lymphocyte depletion see compared to the previous slide see the lymphocytes are so few do you agree this is lymphocyte depletion so the tumor cells are more so what is the prognosis what happens to the patient with this type bad prognosis because lymphocytes have or they talk about immunity also so such because the tumor cells are more and less lymphocytes it's got a bad prognosis also then reticular variant more cellular and large number of atypical pleomorphic cells so nodular lymphocyte predominant type even this has got good prognosis and uh, remember only cd15 cd30 positive for rs cells and don't go into all this this is uh, maybe for uh, a pg references so hodgkins disease the microscopic uh, pictures how do we get this the biopsy lymph node that is processed and slides are made and observed under the microscope so this is nodular sclerosis why because there is sclerosis can you make out so bands of collagen and this is the classic rs cell that you are able to see and this is mixed cellularity why because background you can make out lot of eosinophils that are there and what type of cell is this this is again a classical cell so we are seeing classical reed stone bug cell present in nodular sclerosis and mixed cellularity this is hodgkins lymphoma what type is this what do we see in the lymph node lot of fibrosis that has come and divided it into this is a nodule so nodular sclerosis this is mixed cellularity can you make out this cell so this cell it's a classical cell it has to be there so presence of rs cell is a must to make a diagnosis of hodgkins lymphoma okay this is about uh, modified uh, who classification of hodgkins disease so classic hd i told you and the other one which includes 
nodular lymphocytic prone. So classic HD, do you remember? Four types, we said all four types come under this. The rays, a classic, uh, classification, what we said. Then different is nodular lymphocytic predominant type. So repeating again, bimodal age incidence, young and middle or elderly, let us say. All histological types are more common in males, but nodular sclerosis of Hodgkin's disease, nodular sclerosis type is more common in females. Then the disease usually begins with superficial lymph node enlargement. So remember about this when you see peculiar features in a patient who has approached you. So the warning signs of lymphoma are. So fever, swelling of the face and neck. Why? Because of lymphadenopathy, probably obstruction to the lymphatic. Lump in the neck. So patient may come and say, come and complain that he's got a lump in the neck, got a lump in the axilla, or armpit, or groin. Any group may be involved. Then excessive sweating at night to so increase metabolic rate there, and uh, secondary to inflammation. Unexpected weight loss. So we need to watch out the causes for weight loss. Breathlessness, itchiness, and feeling of weakness. So these are few of the warning signs and symptoms of Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So most commonly patient present with painless Mobile, movable firm lymphadenopathy. So it is mobile, not fixed when you examine the lymph node. So any group may be involved. Cervical, axillary, groin. So constitutional symptoms are present in 25 to 40 percent. That is low grade fever, night switch, weight loss. I showed you that typical picture. What do we find if we examine their blood sample? What are the findings that could be there? Mixed cellularity, I showed you eosinophils. Yeah, blood also could show eosinophilia. So, patient has anemia, what type? Normocytic, normochromic. So, serum iron and total iron binding capacity are low. That means, uh, uh, but the marrow iron. So, serum iron is less. But marrow has normal um, iron content. Marrow infiltration, so if the tumor cells, are cells have started infiltrating the marrow, then typical leukoerythroblastic blood picture is seen. So there is eosinophilia, leukemoid reaction, that is the WBC count is increased. And platelet ESR is elevated. So just ESR increase will not tell us anything because it's a, investigation or a test that has a prognostic significance otherwise esr what is esr erythrocyte sedimentation rate it is increased in all the diseases starting from c to c what is a c now we think of coronavirus okay so common cold to another c is cancer it's increased in almost all the conditions so immunological abnormalities Progressive fall in immunocompetent T cells, defective cellular immunity. And what are the patients interested in? So when we make a diagnosis, they ask what stage. So please tell us what stage is the disease. So staging of the disease is not just done by the pathologist. It's done by the clinician and the radiologist also. So there's so many tests that need to be done for staging to assess the Prognosis. So, an orbital staging or classification takes into account clinical and pathological stage of the disease. And they say A or B. That is for the stage, depending on whether constitutional symptoms like fever, night sweat, weight loss are there or absent. So, if it is present, they say stage B. If it is absent, it is A. And the suffix E and S are also used. E is extra nodal. It's not just involving the node. It is involved something else also. And S for splenomegaly. So spleen is also involved. So for complete staging, all these are required. So chest radiograph, detailed physical examination, CT scan, 
यू शुड से होल बॉडी स्कैन लेबोरेटरी इवेल्युएशन बोन मैरो बायोप्सी हिस्टोपेथोलॉजिकल डॉक्यूमेंटेशन एंड मोर अदर इन्वेस्टिगेशन लाइन स्टेजिंग लेपेरोटमी सो आई डोंट डील विथ ऑल दिस एंड प्रोग्नोसिस so with the use of aggressive radiotherapy and chemotherapy the outlook has uh, improved significantly so even now i have uh, few patients and even uh, re- uh, friends who have become patients you know doing really good with almost 2 3 years uh, after diagnosis of hodgkin's disease okay overall 5 year survival survival rate for stage 1 stage 2 is about 100% good 5 years they live or lead a normal life so best or good prognosis is for nodular sclerosis variety which has got a very good prognosis and then uh, intermediate prognosis is for mixed cellularity type and bad is lymphocytic depletion type so contrasting features of hodgkin's disease and non hodgkin's lymphoma so just pause the slide the video at this stage and please go through this okay so then you will know some contrasting features but see the prognosis is better with 75 to 85 percent cure for hodgkins whereas prognosis is bad for non hodgkins with 30 to 40 percent cure so by just knowing the disease itself the type of lymphoma now you know what is the prognosis right yes so that's about uh, hodgkins uh, disease you know about hodgkins lymphoma so how do we diagnose that's based on the presence of rsl and what are the different types of rsl and what are the clinical symptoms and signs with which the patient can come and what is the marker i told you cd15 cd30 and then the prognosis so that should be more than enough for you to know about hodgkins lymphoma the non hodgkins lymphoma i told you the classification i showed you so at least you remember precursor b cell precursor t cell peripheral t cell nk cell right so there is a special type of non hodgkins lymphoma which could be a short note topic for you i'll just take 5 minutes to tell you about this lymphoma it's called as burkitt lymphoma burkitt lymphoma bar leukemia so it's an uncommon tumor in adults but compared to a childhood tumor it constitutes about 30% of childhood nhl so this you must and should know because in your practice you may get cases so there are three subgroups of burkitt lymphoma one is african endemic sporadic and immunodeficiency associated so this african endemic burkitt lymphoma was first described in african children and predominantly present it is a jaw tumor so i said you must and should remember all these children presented with the tumor swelling in the jaw so jaw tumor one of the causes you should remember is burkitt lymphoma so that spreads to extra nodal sites as the bone marrow and the meninges so the the relationship between this tumor with oncogenic virus is very evident remember we spoke about epstein barr virus as the etiology for hodgkins lymphoma i told you epstein barr virus also causes infectious mononucleosis a kissing disease epstein barr virus also causes nasopharyngeal uh, uh, carcinoma it also causes kaposi's sarcoma now we have epstein barr virus which is very well documented as a cause for burkitt lymphoma yeah so sporadic uh, burkitt lymphoma is, is a tumor in which the tumor cells are similar to those of burkitt lymphoma but they are more pleomorphic sporadic has a propensity to infiltrate central nervous system and another one is immunodeficiency associated that is seen with patients who have hiv or suffer from aids so morphological features about burkitt lymphoma 
So histologically, three types, all the three types we mentioned are similar. So this is called as a starry sky appearance. See, all these background has a lot of lymphocytes, which are all monotonous, they're all similar, and highly mitotic, that is, they're all under mitosis. And in between, we have macrophages. So these are tingible, we call them as tingible body macrophages. And when we look at this, it looks like a starry sky. So blue sky, why blue sky? Because of so many proliferating lymphocytes, B cells. Then in between the stars in the blue sky. So what are those st <coughs> stars? They're the macrophages. <coughs> Sorry. So Burkitt lymphoma is identified by classical appearance of monomorphic medium-sized cells having round nuclei, frequent mitosis, multiple nucleoli, and interspersed with macrophages. Just remember starry sky, starry sky appearance of Burkitt lymphoma. So if this is a question, write lot of lymph nodes, uh, sorry, lymphocytes, make that background bluish and some spaces representing macrophages. So typical cytogenic abnormalities, cytogenic abnormalities are, so there is translocation 8 to 14 and translocation 8 to 22 involving MYC gene on chromosome 8. So genetic predisposition, it's a high grade tumor, very rapidly progressive. So this is a typical appearance of a Burkitt lymphoma, very rapidly progressing disease. So the background, starry sky. So just register starry sky there. So these are the macrophages, which are tangible body. These are all the tumor cells in the background. And uh, this is what we see. So which age group does it affect? So whenever we use this clinical pictures, you know, the eye need, eyes need to be covered. We should not reveal the identity of uh, anybody, you know, who has a disease. And before we publish or uh, use these uh, pictures, we need to take uh, the consent of the patient for usage also. And uh, I've just taken, because the African children, uh, these are very freely available in uh, the Google. There was no copyright also, but still I acknowledge, uh, you know, the Google for uh, uh, these tumors. So uh, these uh, pictures that I, I have taken, but the eyes, you know, need to be covered. This is the ethical principles that we need to follow. Just remember, and uh, which age group does it affect? Young age. See, look at the entire right jaw involved here, even here the right jaw, how sick the child looks. So African endemic, probably this is endemic. So Burkitt's, very Burkitt's lymphoma, bad prognosis, all these children succumb to the disease. So this is about uh, Burkitt lymphoma and uh, so I've, I've taken enough time to teach you about uh, the WBC disorder, one of the WBC disorder that is lymphoma and uh, lymphoma, though it has got a suffix of oma, we know that this is not a benign tumor, it's a highly malignant tumor that affects the lymph nodes. So main classification is Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Why Hodgkin's lymphoma? Because it has got peculiar RS cells in it. RS cell, RS stands for reed Sternberg cells. I've told you about four types of reed Sternberg cells. The classical reed Sternberg cell, the lacunar type, the popcorn type, the atypical ones in L L N H type, and then the Hodgkin cell and the mummified type. So remember about the classical RS cell. So what comes to the mind when we talk about classical RS cell? It is owl eye appearance. Okay. Then non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So either T cell or B cell derived. And uh, of this T cell or B cell, we said precursor B cell, precursor T cell. And then the peripheral 
T cell or NK cell. So clinical presentation of both types of lymphomas would be similar. And Hodgkin's lymphoma, remember, it's got a bimodal age incidence. It occurs even in the young and in the elderly. So we should not think that all malignancies occur only in elderly. So there are childhood malignancies also. So lymphoma is one of the childhood malignancies. It affects children. Leukemias occur in children. It's all blastomas, hepatoblastoma, neuroblastoma, nephroblastoma. All these occur in children. So that is the message that uh, um, you should remember. So lymphoma, though a suffixoma is a highly malignant tumor, don't get confused between lymphoma and lipoma. Lipoma is a benign tumor of adipose tissue. Lymphoma is a highly malignant tumor of the lymphocytes, lymphocytic origin. Then about NHL, I have told you one type of NHL, that is a Burkitt lymphoma. So the three subtypes I have told you, African endemic, sporadic, and immunodeficiency associated. And how they present with a jaw tumor, swelling in the jaw. Children are usually affected. And the background has a lot of lymphocytes proliferating with high mitotic index. And in between, we see the macrophages giving a starry sky appearance. Okay. So that's about uh, lymphoma. I'm sure you'll go back and uh, open the textbook to read more about it or to recollect and review what you have already learned. Okay. So happy learning, enjoy learning. So learning must be enjoyable. So don't just learn anything for the purpose of writing an answer in the examination. So learn for the knowledge. Because if you have knowledge, so when you practice, you can really use that knowledge to diagnose, treat, and do good to the needy or the sick people or people who come to you for help. Okay? So don't waste your time. So use your... Uh, time very usefully to so keep gaining knowledge about everything and don't forget your basic topics okay thank you